Don't let all your thoughts about the outside world just fall away. Whatever you've been thinking about, whatever places your mind has been scattered, just let them drop. And bring attention right in, right here, right at the breath. There's a lot of unfinished business out there in the world, but it's always going to be unfinished. One job gets done and another one comes right on it. Then you realize a lot of that problem is with the mind itself. On days when things are perfectly fine, the mind starts getting antsy and can't help but thinking about things that it wants. What's the next job out there on the horizon? So if you follow that particular tendency, it never comes to an end. There's always going to be work to do. When people say they finish their job, that's because they just get too, too weak to do it. And so whatever's left has to get left undone. So for the time being, just leave things undone. Let's create this little corner of quietness in the mind. It's what a John Swat liked to call what metta. But he also talked about meditation as creating this corner of quietness, this place where the mind can really be solid and settle down and have a firm foundation, even in the midst of all the things that are not firm and unsettled in the rest of the world. Because when you talk about the world, it's not just the world outside. The world inside the mind also has a lot of unfinished business. And the earth is to, to decide, okay, what business needs doing? What are the tasks that really, when you do them, do get done? So you really do have something accomplished in the mind. This is why the Buddha was so particular about which questions he would answer and which ones he wouldn't answer. Which issues were worth dealing with, which ones were worth just putting aside. You can't take on everything. So you have to focus on what's important. Have a sense of priorities, not only in your life at large, but also in where you focus your attention, where you focus your energy, right here, right now. So you focus on the breath. There are lots of other things you could focus on right here, right now, but you just limit it to the breath. And see what the breath is doing. Is it coming in? Is it going out? Is it comfortable? Is it not comfortable? If the mind wants to analyze things, there's plenty to analyze right here. If it wants to settle down, well, let's just make the breath comfortable and allow the mind to settle down. But do your best to monitor what the mind is doing so that it stays alert and mindful. It doesn't go drifting off other places. Keep it right here with a sense of the body, breathing in, breathing out. As for everything else in the area of your awareness, just let it go. Take this as your beachhead. This is the spot that you're going to develop. As John Lee says, big things have to come from little things. So you have your spot here in the body, you have this place of quiet and focus in the mind. And there'll be other things going on, you'll notice. There's this chatter in the background here, chatter in the background there. This thought comes up, that thought comes up. And it's your ability to just say, no thanks, and come back to the breath. That's what helps develop this quiet center here. And don't think that it's selfish. Just like the monastery, we create a little quiet corner up here in the mountains. And don't think that it doesn't have an effect on the rest of the world. It does. The more quiet there is here, the better it is for the rest of the world. And it's the same with your mind. The more quiet you can have in this one spot, the more stillness, the more steadiness you can get going here. The whole rest of the mind benefits, and the people around you benefit as well. Because once you've got this quiet spot going, then when you act, you act from this quiet spot. When you speak, you speak from this quiet spot. When you think, you think from this quiet spot. When intentions, when impulses arise in the mind, the observer standing on this quiet spot can look at them see what's worth acting on, what's not worth acting on. This way, not only do you benefit, but is that the people around you benefit as well. And 
once this quiet spot gets more settled, then it begins to spread out to affect the rest of your mind. It's like starting a little fire. You may have a lot of brush to set fire to, but in the beginning it's just a little tiny flame, and you have to be very protect, pr protective of it because there's wind and all those sorts of other things that will try to put out the flame. So you have to cup your hands around and be very protective of it. But once it takes, then it will spread. When the Buddha described meditation, he used the word jhana, which comes from the word, ver, a verb to burn. But it's the, the burning not of a, a wood fire, but the burning of an oil lamp. It's a steady flame that's trying to keep going here. Once the steady flame gets established, then it begins to spread. So there's a sense of steadiness and brightness throughout the whole body. As the breath energy gets good in one spot, then you allow it to flow to other spots. And so the little spot begins to expand, expand. And you find that this still awareness fills the whole body. It seems to be the background from which everything else comes out and returns. But you're right there at the stillness. And there is an expansive sense. So even though in the beginning it may seem like when you're practicing meditation there's, and there's a little fence around the mind, there are restrictions on the mind. It's just for the purpose of getting things established. It's like your hands are cupped around the flame that you're trying to get, have it catch. Once the flame has caught hold of the kindling, okay, then it begins to grow on its own and it goes larger and larger. Then there's a sense of expansiveness. So it's not always going to be restricted. In fact, the when the sense of concentration gets solid and begins to spread out through the body, you find it's much more expansive than your ordinary states of awareness. And it's all right here. So we start out with this little corner, this little spot. Look after it, make sure that it's still, make sure that it's quiet, make sure your attention doesn't wander away. If it does wander away, just bring it right back, bring it right back. The sign it was blown off by a little wind a gust of wind there, so you just bring it right back and do your best to protect this little flame of stillness, this little still flame you've got going here. Then once it catches, then it can expand. And the sense of openness and the sense of relief that comes with that level of concentration, just it's hard to find anything to compare. But the important part is doing the groundwork properly in the beginning. Because that's where most of the dangers lie. Once those dangers have passed, okay, then things begin to open up in the mind. There, of course, will be other dangers, but the, the most difficult part is, is just getting the mind to settle down and get established with a proper sense of balance. Not too little energy, not too much energy. Just right. And until you get that sense of just right, there's going to be a lot of... Sometimes it seems like trying to balance a ball bearing on the end of a needle. Just keeps slipping off, slipping off. But finally, once it gets established, you realize it's a lot more solid than you thought. Once you recognize it, then you can keep coming back, coming back. You know that spot. This is how the concentration becomes more and more of a skill.